live. Yep. Hey, it's Chris Homestead in the hard way. And we've got a special guest today. We've got Miss Honeycutt from the Extension Office. And, you know, we've covered it in a lot of videos. We've talked about parasite control and worming your pigs and the importance of it. And Miss Honeycutt's decided to come out here and do a video with us and tell you a little bit about it. And this is scientifically confirmed knowledge. This is not guesswork, speculation. This is stuff that is known facts. Y'all pay attention. So just a little bit about Cooperative Extension. Cooperative Extension is, we're part of the university. We're part of the land grant university in every state. So every state has the, the university that does the, the agriculture work. And in North Carolina, it's, it's excuse me, it's NC State University and NC a &T State University. And the Cooperative Extension System is designed so that the scientists and the research that goes on, on on those campuses, we then take that, they needed a way to disseminate that out into the communities where the rural people lived. So that's how the Extension Service was born. So there's someone like me in every community nationwide. Uh, sometimes it's on a county by county basis. Sometimes it's more of a regional level. Sometimes it's on a state level. So it depends on the funding in your area as to who um, as to how many people your extension agent may serve or how many counties or regions they may serve. So in my area, I cover the two counties uh, nearby, which is Lenore County and Greene County, and, uh, and I work with livestock producers. So I work with everyone like, like Chris doing you know homesteading and, and small acreage, um, hobby farm raising, and I work on up to those that are doing commercial agriculture, commercial livestock production as well. Also work with the youth program, so a lot of kids that are raising animals for 4-H products, projects, um, or you know just to, to have fun at home with. So that's a little bit about what I do. But it's my job to to help folks. You know, when you have a problem with your animals, when you've got a question about welfare or husbandry, um, that's when you know you want an unbiased opinion. You don't want to research something um, that's only someone trying to sell a product. So I'm not trying to sell anything, and I'm just trying to make sure that I bring good, unbiased information to the people that need it. So one of the things, the conversations that Chris and I had was about um, internal parasites, especially in swine. And a lot of people don't really think that much about internal parasites or the fact that swine would have it, simply because most of the time they're on a dirt lot like this. They, they, they quickly get rid of any sort of vegetation that's there. And so people say, oh, well, there's no, there's no way they could get internal parasites this way. So you have to kind of understand a little bit about the parasite life cycle. So once parasites get onto a piece of ground, either through uh, animals that have been there previously um, or moving new animals in, it can be real hard to get rid of them. And so understanding a little bit about that life cycle of the parasite can really help you understand it when you have a problem. So, so let's talk about when you have a problem. So you're gonna see certain things in your animals that may indicate that parasites could be a problem. And so some of the things could be that maybe they're just not doing well. Maybe they're just hard keepers. They don't gain weight like they should. Maybe you start to see some diarrhea. Um, maybe you, you know, if you cut them open, uh, if, if one of them dies, death, death is definitely um, a, a symptom of heavy internal parasite uh, infestation. Um, then you can physically see the parasites inside them then. Um, and it also may be, um, oh gosh, there was another one. Um, I'll think of it later. But the, the basics of the life cycle is that animal ingests that parasite egg and then that parasite relies on the host, the animal, to, for it to grow. It has to have that animal to grow. So the animal ingests the egg, the egg hatches inside, uh, hatches in their intestines, and then it starts to migrate through different parts of the body. And it depends on the worm itself, the species of worm, as to what part of the body that it migrates to. Some of the worms that, um, that can be found in, internally in pigs, they might be uh, worms that affect the lungs. They could be worms that affect um, the digestion, that's where the diarrhea comes from. If there are worms that get into their lungs, you'll hear coughing, uh, and that coughing can lead to pneumonia. So these are all ways that, you know, you're, this is why you're gonna start to see that pig that won't gain weight like it should. It's because the parasites are, are eating all the food that it, sh or the calories, the, the nutrients that the pig should be getting. Oh, I know what I was gonna say, anemia. If, if you see, you know, that the, the, um, 
the membranes, the mucosa membranes, the gums, the internal of the eyelids are really pale, pale, uh, instead of being bright pink like they should. That's because the, the parasites are on the inside, literally sucking the blood out of them from the inside. So, you know, now that you've noticed these horrible signs in your animals, you've got a parasite problem. And the best way to, to get rid of that problem in that specific animal is to use an, an over-the-counter dewormer, anthelmintic. And that's the way to break that life cycle. You've got to decrease the adult worm population on the farm. You've got to break the cycle in the animal. Um, in order to really get that animal healthy again. You know, if, if your child was sick, you would take them to the doctor and have something that's obvious that would be good to improve their health. So, so that's why we would use those kind of products in, in swine. A lot of people like to use uh, or think that um, homeopathic or, or other alternatives to dewormers are beneficial, but there's not any research base that shows that that is going to save an animal that has a heavy, heavy internal parasite infestation. The, a lot of those homeopathic uh, remedies are more anecdotal. We, we think that it works because someone else, it worked for someone else. Well, that person may have never had parasites ever on their farm and maybe that's why it's working for them because they don't have a heavy load on their farm. Maybe they've never brought in new animals. Uh, anytime you're bringing in another animal, you're potentially bringing in parasites that you've never had before. So, you know, this the talk of using uh, pumpkins or, or garlic powder or apple cider vinegar, those are things that we just, we don't have the research on to say, yes, that's going to cure that animal. When you get an animal that's, that's unthrifty, that's anemic, that's got diarrhea and coughing, that animal needs treatment in order to save it. You're, you're just going to be, you know, burying a lot of your animals if you wait till they get to that point to try to use some of those homeopathic uh, methods or, or treatments to, say, to see if they'll save them. So, and sometimes you'll, the infestations will be so bad, you know, if you're using your, your swine for, you know, home meat consumption, if you take it to the butcher, the butcher will not let you bring home the liver because a lot of times you'll see the liver uh, had these white spots on it and that's a, another symptom or, or diagnosis of internal parasite damage and and some of the worms that um, pigs have can transfer over into you know being bad for human consumption so that's why you may not even get all of the meat that you thought you should get because you that animal has been damaged quite heavily trichinosis trichinosis that's exactly right so trichinosis is is Most the, don't even know what that the is. disease that is comes from those worms that are in those animals. So we can really see a lot of problems um, when you get animals that are heavily infested with parasites. So what else should we add? Well, we talked a little bit about the fact that the garlic powder and the pumpkins, you know, the fact that if you ever see worms, if you have a, I'm just gonna be blunt with you, if you look at hog pen one day and there's worms falling out of your pig's butt. It's too late. He, he is too late. Um, that should have been handled. What you have in that situation is you have adult worms that are dying from old age. That's why the worm is hanging out of the pig's butt. Now you feed them pumpkins and diatomaceous earth, right? Diatomaceous earth is a little diatome with their fossils. It's like broken glass and you add the fiber from the pumpkins and it scrapes their intestines out. Well, what you're doing is you're removing the dead and dying geriatric worms, and it looks like you weren't one. You didn't do anything about the eggs, you didn't do anything about the larvae. So all you did was you got a new crop of worms coming along, robbing you out of money for feed, killing your livestock. I told you in videos before that I've knee cropped to see dozens of pigs. I've been feeding the pumpkins, I've feed them diet to make the surf. I use apple cider vinegar, and it looked like spaghetti. When you cut the pig open, without spaghetti. <coughs> Liver, big white spots like got cirrhosis. The lung worms, pneumonia is a bad enough problem out here on the ground. Mm -hmm. Especially like we're in East North Carolina, we have wide temperature swings. And I know somebody's gonna say, well, being cold doesn't make you sick. No, being cold doesn't make you sick. Being cold weakens your immune system and lets you get sick. And if you've got an animal that's full of parasites, that's right. That, that's full of they're parasites. They're sucking the blood out of them. They're sucking the nutrients out of them. So their immune system is even weaker. That's exactly right. And I have to deal with it daily. I, I see it a lot. I see it a lot on YouTube. And there's 
Now, I've talked to a lot of people with the co-ops, and I think garlic powder may remove some adult worms. Possibly. I don't know that for a fact, but that's the impression I get talking to people that raise pigs with the co-op that have to use organic blue worms. Apple cider vinegar seems to have some success, but not on a heavy infestation. What we do is we take our fecal samples. You take a Ziploc bag, turn it inside out, get some pig poop, fresh pig poop, zip it up, and you take it to your local veterinarian. She's going to put it underneath the microscope, which she's going to say, you got a heavy infestation, you have no infestation, there's plenty of eggs, there's not any eggs, and that's going to tell you what you got. Right, and, tell, and, and then you can treat specifically that's for right. that you worm. Can, you can use the, the product that uh, is targeted for that parasite. Like here, the only problem we've had was roundworms. I don't think we've ever had lungworms going by what the slaughterhouse does. Mm -hmm. but they'll, they'll tell you if you ask them. And we don't have any trouble with our liver. We always get our livers back. But a lot of people do, you know. What we did here was we broke the virus out. If I send off fecals now, I don't get a positive result. We don't have any worms. But I did it by accident. We moved the pigs from one side of the farm to the other. We warmed them and we put them on a trailer because it was the easiest time to do it. Had them in the loading sheet. They stayed on the trailer half a day while we got some stuff straight. We all the eggs out. We put them in a clean pasture. There's never been pigs right here. There's been pigs everywhere else, you see. There's never been pigs right here. It's right behind my house. I mean, we say backyard pigs. We mean literal backyard <laughs> pigs. And we got clean pigs on clean pasture. Like Miss Hennicott was saying, a lot of people that fight, they're doing a the Cracker Jack job warming with pumpkins, didn't have any worms to begin with. Because a pig coming out of concrete normally doesn't have them. Right. So you go to a hog farm that's raising on concrete, you didn't get a wormy pig to begin with. Clean pig, clean pen, no worms. No chicken. So I want to cover right quick about chickens. Well, Miss Hennicott's here to maybe tell you I know what I'm talking about. We used to make the mistake of having chickens run around our hog pens. Who'd have thunk it, right? Chicken, what harms a chicken? But especially with goats and pigs, chickens spread worm eggs. They dig through the poop, they eat them. The chicken's digestive system is too short to kill them. Normally, if, if a other species eats a worm egg, like if a cow picks up a hog worm, it'll die. It'll die. That's why, like on the African savanna, they don't have a big worm problem because there's gazelle and zebras and everything's eating. They're picking up each other's worms to keep the population down. But chickens will pick them up over here, walk over there and poop them out. And you can't have a clean pen, dirty pen set up because they're going to make every they're pen a dirty up. pen. Yeah. Now they keep the miles down, but they're spreading parasites. They also spread disease, especially with goats. And we've seen in other videos it's not a good idea to mix turkeys and ducks and chickens together because right. it's the same thing. They can each have diseases they can live with, but it'll kill the other species. Yep. And this is all stuff people need to know that nobody tells you. Everybody thinks the mixed barnyard is so cute with the goats and the pig and the chickens all in the same pen. And then when the pig dies, the chickens are dying, or the goats dead, or, the, or my personal favorite, the pig eats the chickens and eats the goats. <laughs> you know that happens. <laughs> they will. <laughs> you let a goat stick his head, I'm not going to tell you how we know this, but if you have a goat stick his head through this fence, it suck. well, they might not be it, they might just be half a goat when you get back. Because uh -huh. if he gets his head stuck, especially that. Fine, there she'll eat. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you how we know that, we know it's a fact. So We're, cleanliness is a is a big part of this. Like you said, you know, you get clean pens and, and moving clean animals, you know, if, if you know you already have a problem, then um, one of the ways to try to start mitigating that is is cleanliness. You know, dry worms, the worm eggs need moisture. So, you know, try and I know pigs dig mud holes, but try to keep things as dry as possible and you'll reduce the, the livability of that worm egg uh, in the soil. I think this being sand, just dead sand. Yeah, with the rain we've had, you don't have much water. And well, that's one of the reasons pigs are here, because it's dead sand yeah. and sand here. I think with this being dead, and I'm not sure if this is scientific or not, this is my opinion. I think with this being just dead white beach sand, and then the fact that the sun bakes it in the yeah. summertime, yeah. I think that has helped us a whole lot, because it don't stay wet. It don't stay wet all year where they can survive. And you may know I don't. Pig worm eggs, especially
especially roundworms, can live about forever. Is that right? They have a very long, if, if it's moist, if the soil is moist and, and especially shady and they don't get exposure to direct sun and dry out, then yeah, they can really stick around for a really yeah, long several time. Several years. I don't know how long it is. Other people disc up their hog pens, like with the big pastures, like with the co-op. They take the pigs out, they go in the disc and level, turn the ground up. They claim that helps a whole lot. Like that's logical. And the other thing I've heard them say is they'll plant like rye, one to soak up the extra nutrients. Because you know, in the hog pen, you're going to have a lot of fertilizer. That's right. Yep. We let ours grow up. We'll take the pigs out of them with the weeds, take them, then turn the pigs back in. Pigs get to eat the weeds and sucks the extra stuff out of the ground. But they said they would plant something like rye and it burn it off. The heat. Now that's that's from the boys with the co-op, and that makes sense too that the heat would kill them. But I don't know how hot burning yeah. off. That's getting back to the speculation thing. Yeah. But that is that is a something I've been told. But that would attribute to to cleanliness. You right. Know, it's all that, cleanliness. <clears throat> leveling the ground back out. You know, growing the other grass, then then going back through and burning that to really clean it up as much as you can before you put the animals back on it. It's you know if. To try to mitigate a problem that you already have, you know, cleanliness is one of the first things that you can do to try to reduce the adult population and the, and the eggs that are already there. And we'll talk about clean pens and dirty pens in another video, so this one's not two hours long. But we have what we call a clean pen, dirty pen system. The pigs are wormed in a certain pen. They go in, until they go in that pen, they're considered dirty. They're wormed. Uh, there's no nothing in there for them to eat. So the only thing they're gonna eat is gonna be off a concrete slab. That's something else. If you can keep your pigs from eating on the dirt, if you can feed them on a the concrete slab, mm -hmm. that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And that's why pigs on concrete, I can't stress this enough. Pigs on concrete do not get parasites. Right. Because there's nowhere for the parasites to leave. Because yeah. that life cycle's got to be complete. If you can break that if you can leave the eggs in this pen down here and leave the pigs over here, you've got to be. And it's the same thing with cows, goats. Biggest thing we ever found with goats is keep your head off the ground. Yep. Biggest thing we found with cows is you got to really worm feeder cows. Once they get grown, kind of be your experience. Okay. Once they get yeah. grown, they're okay. So you don't have if you've got a wormy cow, she might need to be a cub. Yeah, definitely. Is there anything else you want to cover? I think that's about it. Well, this is pretty good. I enjoyed this. Me too. Remember, you never plow a field, but turn it over in your mind. You can do all this stuff. I'm here to help you. The extension office is here to help you. And they are very good too. We've been using them for decades. They'll help you. Uh, nobody seems to know about them. We've mentioned them in several videos. Nobody seems to know they're there. Uh, I don't know if this is true everywhere, but here, Next County has got a chicken pucker they can rent. Yes, so a lot of times, um, extension offices, we will be able to get grant funds and things like that for the community to use. And so like in my county, we have um, some cattle handling equipment, a portable chute, and some panels that can be rented. Um, right beside us in Wayne County, there is a, um, a, it's a whole processing unit. It's a scalver, it's the plucker, it's the killing cones, all of those things that can be rented um, for someone that's homesteading that wants to process their birds. And I didn't know that. I didn't know they had a head gate. I was sitting around here and wished I had a head gate a thousand times and I could just go to town and rent one yep. from the extension office. So if you're trying to find the extension office in your area, then uh, just, you know, you, you just need to know which uh, university in your state is the Ag University. So it's different in every state, but usually it has the name of the state in it, with the exception of South Carolina, which is Clemson. But, um, but that's the Ag School. So find the Ag School and then just Google, you know, whatever that state is, um, you know, Georgia Extension, and, and you'll find it. And, and then you'll be able to narrow down who would serve your area. I find out about covers. We're going to try to do some more of these if, if time permits. But uh, I do appreciate y'all watching and I hope we helped you. Remember, that's why we're doing this is to help you. So don't put anything down in the comments that you used to worm your pigs by feeding green tobacco because my own is a collard. Much less a green tobacco leaf. We're trying to help you now. We ain't looking at a bunch of arguments. This is the truth. Y'all have a good one.